Hello, hope you are doing well. Uh, today I am going to take up a lesson from NCERT's English textbook for class 10. The name of the book is First Flight and the name of the story is Madam Rides the Bus. Today I will take up part 4 of the story. We have already discussed first 3 parts. Let us recap a little. I will ask you a few questions and that will help us recapitulate the story. How did Wally save up money for her first journey? Was it easy for her? You can go back to part 3. Wally had saved each penny, smallest denomination and every stray coin that came her way by resisting every temptation to buy peppermints, toys, balloons etc. It must have been very difficult for her to resist all these things. Even at the village fair, she resisted the temptation to be on the merry-go-round. Thus, she had been able to save 60 pies for her first bus journey. That's how she saved her money. Okay, the next question is, what did Wally see on her way that made her laugh? Wally saw a young cow, tail high in the air, running very fast, right in the middle of the road, in front of the bus. This made her laugh. She had never seen such a sight. The driver sounded the horn again and again so that the cow moves away. But the more he honked, the more frightened the animal became and faster it galloped. She found that scene very amusing. So that shows how innocent she was. Okay, the next one. Why didn't she get off the bus at the bus station? Wally had planned that she only wanted to ride on the bus. That was her desire. That was her dream. And she was working towards that only. She was saving up. And that's what she did. She would spend 30 pies on her fare, go to the town and then come back by the same bus before her mother woke up. She didn't have time or money to go to see the town. And let me tell you that would have been really dangerous, isn't it? Next question. Why didn't Wally want to go to the stall and have a drink? What does this tell you about her? Wally had saved only 60 pies for the trip. She did not want to waste any money because she had to come back by the same bus at any cost. So when the conductor suggested that she gets down and has a drink, she refused. He offered to bring one for her, but she still refused. This shows that she was careful and cautious enough not to take anything from any stranger. In real life also we have to be careful of strangers. We have to be very very careful. We are told we should not talk to strangers. We should not entertain strangers at any cost. Right? That is for our safety. Let us begin with part 4 now. You can open your books on page 125. Part 4 goes like this. Now once again the conductor asks her, won't your mother be looking for you? Now he is not making fun of her. Now he is also concerned about her. You know he asked her when he gave the girl the ticket. No, no one will be looking for me. Well he said. The bus started and again there were the same wonderful sights. Well he was not bored of the slightest and greeted everything with the same excitement that she had felt for the first time. She was happy to see the green fields, the palm trees, the blue blue sky, the green green fields and also the canal. So she was fascinated by these beautiful scenes. But suddenly she saw an animal lying dead by the roadside just where it had been struck by some fast moving vehicle. She was overcome with sadness. 
what had been a lovable beautiful creature just a little while ago had now suddenly lost its charm and its life and looked so horrible and so frightening and Bali was very sad to see that sight. The bus moved on. The memory of that animal haunted her. Her enthusiasm was dampened. She no longer wanted to look out of the window. She sat there glued to her seat. She didn't look out until the bus reached her village at 340. She stood up and stretched herself. Then she turned to the conductor and said, well, sir, I hope to see you again. Okay, madam, he answered her smilingly. Whenever you feel like a bus ride, come and join us. And don't forget to bring your fare. She laughed and jumped down from the bus. Then away she went, running straight for her home. When she entered her house, she found her mother awake and talking to one of Wally's aunts, the one from South Street. This aunt was a real chatterbox, never closing her mouth. Once she started talking, then there is no end to it. Shashi asked, and where have you been? She asked Wally. She spoke very casually, not expecting a reply. So Wally just smiled. And her mother and aunt went on with their conversation. So that question was thrown at Wally just like that. So Wally didn't have to answer anything. So they continued with their conversation. Yes, you are right, her mother said. So many things in our midst and in the world outside. How can we possibly know about everything? And even when we do not know about something, we often can't understand it completely. Can we? Oh, yes. Uh, Brett Wally, what? asked her mother. What's that you say? Oh, said Wally, I was just agreeing with what you said about things happening without our knowledge. Because they wouldn't go out of the house at all. So they would not know about many, many things. So they said, just a chit of a girl she is, said her aunt. And yet, look how she pokes her nose into our conversation, just as though she were a grown-up lady. You see, the reference of her being a grown-up lady is coming throughout the chapter, because she behaves like one. Wally smiled to herself. She didn't want them to understand her smile. But then... There wasn't much chance of that, was there? Will they come to know that Wally went to the town all by herself? I don't think so, unless she tells. So there were a few words that have come in the chapter, like uh, spread eagle is spread out, and then haunted means returned repeatedly to her mind. It was difficult to forget. So these were a few difficult words that were there. Now that we have come to the end of the story, we will discuss a few questions, global questions over here. But I would want you to read the story on your own and try to get the meaning of the words from the context of the story. Well, if you don't get the meaning from the context, you may refer to a dictionary. Look at the meanings and pick up the word that fits in the best in the context of the story, right? So your task now is to read the story on your own. You may read it in four parts, okay? Now let us discuss question answers. The first question is, what was Wally's deepest desire? Find the words and phrases in the story that tell you this. I just want you to go back to the story right and pick up those words and phrases that tell us i'm giving you 30 seconds go back to the text quickly go through it have you done it shall we discuss wally's deepest desire was to go on a bus ride 
the words and phrases in the story that tell us this are source of unending joy. Stare wistfully, kindle in her longings, dreams and hopes. I have given you a few examples. You can add more to the list. Next question. How did Wali plan her bus ride? What did she find out about the bus and how did she save up the fare? All this is given in part 3. Quickly go through part 3 and then I will discuss this with you. Over many days and months, Wali listened carefully to the conversations between her neighbors and people who regularly used the bus and asked a few discreet questions here and there. She came to know that the town was 6 miles away from her village and the bus fare was 30 paisa and the bus trip took 45 minutes only. She also thought rather calculated that if she stayed in the bus and came back by the same bus it would only cost her 60 paisa. She saved each and every penny she got resisting all temptation to buy the things that she liked the most and these things were peppermints, toys etc and even a ride on the merry-go-round at the village annual fair so as to save her 60 paisa and it was a secret trip. Next question, what kind of a person is Wali? Now to answer this question, pick out the following sentences from the text and fill in the blanks. You see, half sentence is given. You have to go back to the text, find out the sentence and then find out the word that goes with this sentence and you will be able to get clues for your answer. I will just read the first part, you find out the second part and then I will move on to the next one. Stop the bus, stop the bus and a tiny hand was raised. Part 2, have you been able to find the word? Commandingly, okay, have you noted it down now? Second one, yes, dash, to town said Wali, still standing outside the bus. Yes, part 2. I simply have to, the sentence is, yes, I simply have to go to town, said Wali, still standing outside the bus. Third sentence, there is nobody here. Now, dash, she said. There is nobody here who is a child, she said. That happens in the bus. Hmm. And then it continues, I have paid my 30 paisa like anyone else. Now the fourth sentence, never mind, she said, I can. Dash, you don't have to help me, I am not a child, I tell you. She said, irritably. So what do you think? will come in the blank. I can get on by myself. Hmm. Next sentence. You need not bother about me. I, Wally said, I can take care of myself, turning her face towards the window and staring out. Sixth sentence. When she turned to the conductor and said, Well, sir, I hope, dash, Part 4, have you found it? Yes, I am sure you must have, it is towards the end. I hope to see you again. So what do these sentences tell us about Wali? These sentences will help us, you know, write the character sketch of Wali. Wali is a confident girl who did not think that her age was a limitation to her traveling alone to the town. She considered herself a grown-up and acted like one. 
and she was also aware of the things around her. She did not talk to the strangers at all. If anybody tried talking to her, she did not respond very well because she didn't want to continue with the conversation, right? So that tells us a lot about her, that she was careful and she was cautious. Next question, why does the conductor refer to Wally as Madam? The conductor called Wally Madam as she behaved like a grown-up. I didn't think that she was a child. She also refused his help and told him that she can manage on her own. And that's true also. She managed on her own. She wanted to take a bus ride. She planned everything. She replanned. She calculated everything. She recalculated everything. And she went for the bus ride and she was not afraid of anything. Next question. Find the lines in the text which tell you that Wally was enjoying her ride on the bus. Now which section tells you that she was enjoying the ride? Section 2 and section 3. So Wally thoroughly enjoyed her ride in the bus. The following lines from the text tell us about it. She saw many things on her way, a canal, palm trees, grasslands, distant mountains. Oh, it was all so wonderful and that's what she felt. Sometimes the bus seemed to the point of gobbling up another vehicle but was coming towards them or a pedestrian crossing the road. Somehow it passed smoothly leaving all obstacles behind and then she saw a cow running very fast in front of the bus. This all seemed very funny and Wally thoroughly enjoyed it. She laughed and laughed till tears flowed from her eyes. It was a new experience for her, isn't it? Next question, what does Wally mean when she says, I was just agreeing with what you said about things happening without our knowledge. Yes, for example, when she, the author says she was fascinated by the bus and watching the bus fill with a new set of people each time was a source of unending joy for her. And when the author describes the bus, he stresses on the color and the look of the new bus like silver because a child is attracted towards color. The seats were soft and luxurious. The description that the author gives when Wally looked outside are typical of an eight-year-old. Okay, the blue sky and the acres and acres of green field show the enthusiasm of a child. A cow running in front of the bus fascinated the child whereas the sight of the dead animal brought tears in her eyes and she refused to look out of the window on her return journey and she was saddened by the scene. This also describes the behavior of an eight-year-old child aptly. Are you ready for the next question? Hmm. The author describes the things that Wally sees from an eight-year-old's point of view. Yes, of course. Can you find evidence from the text for this statement? You see, all these questions are designed in a manner that you all have to go back to the text again and again. And if you go back to the text again and again and read it, you will enjoy it, you will understand it better and you will be able to answer any question. Okay, let us discuss. This story has a lot of people talking in it. Yes, of course, there are many dialogues. The conductor jokes and laughs with Wally. Some passengers try to show their concern for her and her mother and her aunt spend time chatting. So that is how the author has designed the form of the story. I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to the story and also discussing the questions. With this, we have come to the writing section. 
read the conversations in the story carefully, then think of similar people or similar situations that you might have experienced, isn't it? Your family and neighbors talking, you must have heard them or your, you know, mother talking to her sister or fellow passengers on a journey, friends speaking to each other, etc. There are various situations. Write a page of such a conversation with dialogues, about three paragraphs. You can choose any number of characters you like, okay? So, dialogue writing is there. Now, my next question for you is, write on any one of the following topics. First one is, have you ever planned something entirely on your own without taking grown ups into your confidence? What did you plan and how? Did you succeed in carrying out your plan? This could be a trip to the market, planning a surprise birthday for your parents or even a harmless mischief. You wanted to surprise your parents for that. I am not telling you to take a bus ride all alone like Wally. I am asking you a trip to the market. Wherever we are staying, we have a nearby market or you are planning a surprise birthday party for your mother or father or you are planning a prank, harmless one right? So, write about it. The next topic is, have you ever made a journey that was unforgettable in some way? Yes, you must have any journey hmm? uh, by car, by road, by train or any mode of transportation. Draw a postcard depicting one such moment and write a few lines describing the moment. So, you have to now draw it. We are now connecting art with writing. You see, learning is connected across the curriculum. So, you will draw that and you will write about it. Now, my third topic for you is, are you concerned about traffic and road safety? What are your concerns? How would you make road travel safer and more enjoyable. Think of both animals and human beings when you make your plans. So, here you have to write do's and don'ts. You have to tell the pedestrians as well as people who drive on the roads, okay? So, you have to write do's and don'ts about this topic. Then if you choose the second one, you have to write about that you, ha you have planned something on your own and the first one where you are writing dialogues. You can choose any one and when you are writing, follow the process approach to writing. That means plan the idea, then write it, then of course you have to review it and revise it, edit it. And then finally, make the final draft. Let us do a project now. The project is collect old used tickets from your friends, relatives, neighbors. Now, these tickets could be bus tickets, train tickets, plane tickets, cinema tickets, tickets to cultural events or parking tickets. Make a collage using as many as possible of the tickets collected on a sheet of poster paper. You can also write down a few words about the experiences of the passengers who give you their tickets. These words could be about the journey or what they saw. Was it comfortable? Was it bumpy? Did they see rivers, small trees? or big trees, etc. That is one. Or you can plan a journey into a fantasy land. Yes, 
you are planning a journey imagine a journey and that journey is into a fantasy land and decide which mode of transportation will take you and your friends over there you can then design a ticket for entry and decide how much you would charge and write its description with this we have come to the end of this session i hope you enjoyed the story i would want you to read the story once again do all the comprehension questions and do your writing tasks and also the project happy learning thank you